Half time here at Cork Park between Cork and Antrim. Cork leading one goal and 16 points to 11 points. Now, just a reminder that we have the second of today's quarterfinals coming up at four o'clock, and that, of course, is Galway versus Tipperary. Now, also just to let you know that later in the evening we have the draw live for this year's football championship quarterfinals, and that's uh, after all of the hurling action. But in the meantime, of course, Cyril Farge, Moss McCahey, and Ger Lochnan are here with us. Uh, it's an eight points difference now, Ger, and you have to say it's now going to be a big, big hill for Antrim. Ah, well, it is. Is, is it, you know, the, the, the few minutes before half time ruined the game, really. But I suppose what it just shows is the potential that it is in this Cork team. You know, the level of skill they have, how good they are in the air. When they get time and space, when they get those two things, Cork can play a really beautiful hurling. And that support work among the forwards is excellent. As uh, Marcel staying with Murphy going to send the forward and Niall McCarthy wing forward. You know, what they're doing today is go back to the old game of running from centre forward and they look very very dangerous creating the overlap giving the ball and scoring points from distance which you will need if you're going to play Kilkenny later on you have to be able to score from far out now Antrim on the other hand they're playing actually nice hurling yes, they you know, they're playing nice hurling they're skillful they're trying to find the man they're trying to do the right thing they're trying to play the ball into space and they're, they have their two men full forward line they're playing it just outside Watson Watson has come out and got three or four points so you can't play they're playing to the limit of yeah, their ability sure. which just cock at a different class really they are and we ju just and Marty was and Peter was saying in the commentary, we were saying it here to ourselves watching the match, as long as they didn't concede a goal just before half time, and then of course. Yeah, they the, did. The goal yeah. came in. It was very late in the game. Now, Niall McCarthy is playing very well. And, like, Custon does very well in this score as well. Lay, lay, you can see it here. Lays off, for a big fella, lays off a lovely ball. Now, look at this. Catches it here. Has a little look. Lovely little ball across the side. Now, that's beautiful down in front. Beats it in here. First touch. A second gets it to here. Has a look around. Little pop pass. Niall McCarthy now is trying 45, 50 yards in the far side. And he does a tennis racket on it. So, you can't hook him. Like, exactly. A lot of, there's a lot of people giving out to him. But still, this lovely pop pass. And he does the right thing here, doesn't try to strike it, you know, kind of like, like a tennis racket, so very hard to stop it. Now that put them six points up and all of a sudden the game twisted. It was going into half time, Michael, and there was only three points in it. Mm. Now McCarthy has done a lot of work, even in the last two games against Ward, but this guy has been probably the best forward that but, doesn't usually get more scores than Cork have. We were even saying before the match, right, that's the play that you would want your full forward to be working at, realistically, is getting the ball yeah, in front yeah, of yes, goal, yes, yes. back to goal, getting Pop the runners right. to come alongside him, a little throw off the hand pass and yeah, stuff like that, exactly. to guys that are running at pace and, and with a bit of speed. And, and that was effective, you know, and there's not enough of that in the As in the you would like. expect, I suppose, during a match like that, you know, you will, you will get the effort from Antrim. It's the little things that kind of let you down because when they got the ball and they got a bit of space themselves, they scored some lovely points. It was some great points. And, and, and it was, as we said, drove the ball into space as well. Because that was a great crossfield ball, uh, right across from PJ O'Connor over to this side here and ball over the bar. You know, to open up a defence, you cannot beat that crossfield ball. The crossfield ball is so, uh, uh, so effective. So they have taken on Cork. You know, when they run at Cork, Cork can be in slight difficulty as well. They have scored great points, but at the same time, Cork are, you know, Cork are just cruising. They're not, they're not covering back the same way as they would normally cover course, back. Yes. In, so it's, it's very much an exhibition type of game, rather but, but, than but a very... But they have, they have, the, but legs, they have skill. They have the legs. I mean, they have, they have, um, uh, Diddy Cal has gone with a young squad, yes, okay, yeah. he's changed different positions, guys have been playing forward and stuff, but they, they've done very, very well in well, that first half here. Guy. Yeah, like, yeah. He's looking at Watson, he's looking at he's got four wonderful points from play. Once he concentrates mm -hmm. on Ireland, he's very good, and like Karen McGeek and Matt Ma 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 Rory, they're causing a lot of trouble because they have pace, but yet they're doing silly little things, and against a team like Cork, you're going to get caught. We saw two lovely points there from Watson, but uh, as you alluded to there, Cyril, the lucky man is very lucky to be still in the field if, if Michael Wadding got a full view of this incident. No, he gave him a yellow card, but yeah, well, he might... He might have made it right. There's a bit of shoulder going on underneath the ball between himself, between himself and Cadigan, but like you just can't do this, like shoving and pushing. Watch this. Like that's that's a red card I could see. Like I don't know what don't are looking at it here. Look. Yeah. But I think I think I start again, right? I mean, look, we've seen this now for the last couple of weeks again, right? Oh. Look, you've. Mike Wadding is gone, he's issuing the red the deal of cap, but he must go in and you must consult with the umpires there. They're the guys that are fronted, they're the guys that have actually seen this, right? And if you look at Donald Hughes's action there again, he's pointing to the young umpires. He saw it straight away. He yeah. saw it straight away, you know, so mm. it's, it's not good enough, you know. I suppose it's, it's the case of the, the referee bailing out a small bit. Says if I send the, this man off, the, the game so is going to be Since then, Watson yeah. has yeah. gone yeah. on and he's got four points. But this is this is Liam. This is the big problem mm. with Liam. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. over yeah. the last four or five years, they've had huge problems in entering with him. He has been walking off panels. Yeah. He's been walking out of training sessions. He has disappeared off playing soccer. Now yeah. he's back with Indy, and then he had him under great control. Mm. And next thing he does something like this. I think in fairness to Michael Wadding in that situation, I think he did consult the umpires before he gave him the yellow card. Anyway, Cork and Antrim the second half coming up in just a few minutes. 
Welcome back to the Sunday game live. We were just talking uh, before uh, the break there about the fact, you know, that Antrim are giving it their all, but it's it's the little things sometimes they were saying that can let them down. You no. know, occasionally they had the ball in defence, didn't clear it, and it cost them. Naivety, really, and you can't mm. afford to that against a top team like Cork. You see here, the Larga here, first while he turns back round, but look what he does. He's been trying to strike, he goes to give a little pass, and they're in trouble straight away. Now, a second gets on That's here. That's the there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Ben O'Connor gets on eventually <coughs> on this, he'll top it back, back to, to Tom Kinney. They won't miss scores. Now, this happened a few times. Like, they're detrimental scores because they are getting good points down the far side, but like presenting these to Cork, they're not going to miss any kind of chances. Little pop pass back, Tom Kinney, no better map outside. That's the worst. Tom has scored six or seven or eight points in the championship now, just because he's doing that all day. Now, now this here is again, who's he's, played very well yeah, in that first half, but he gave now, away Frankie Murphy's having a good game in the party. He's waiting for that to come to pop a little pass inside when they didn't come over the bar himself. He's, as Tomas said, he's having the far mm. better game in the forward. You don't pick him out for his hustle and bustle, but the ball he gets, he just distributes a lovely 30 or 40 yard pass. But, he's great to lay on I mean, ball. They, they were saying to me for his work rate as a corner forward, it was immense as well, but like, you need that type of work rate in, in central positions. And at times there in the first half as well, he's getting the hook in, he got the block in once or twice, and he set up different scores as well. So. It's going well from there, it's in the forward. No doubt OK, that. now just briefly referring to the second of this year's Harding quarterfinals, the game between Galway and Tipperary. We're going to head down pitch side right now to hear from Joanne Cantrell because she is talking to two former stars of the Blue and Gold and the Maroon and White. That's Tomás Dunn and Alan Kearns. Well, last time these two sides met, back in 2005, Alan and Galway came from six points down with just 13 minutes left to beat Tommy's tip by two points in the end. Alan, that was obviously one of the great moments for you and Galway. Why do you think it hasn't happened since you haven't managed to get to a semi? I don't know. Um, I suppose it's hard to a great Kikini team. That's topped with them many occasions. So, uh, you know, they're going for five in a row this year. So, um, yeah, that was a great game. Um, we came from six behind and uh, we're down then to be Kikini in this classic semi final that year. And uh, subsequently went to an All Ireland final, unfortunately beaten by Cork. But, uh, you know, I think if Galway could get over today, they might build that momentum again and uh, going into the Waterford game, you know. So, hopefully they'll do it today again. Tommy, is it fair to say that nobody really knows what to expect from either side? Have they got over earlier defeats in the championship? Yeah, I think it is fair to say that, Joanne. Tip's form is a little bit more easier to predict in terms of they played well enough against Offaly and Wexford, but they weren't really true tests, whereas Galway, uh, they were very poor against Kilkenny in the Leinster final. It's been a while ago since that. So um, Tip's form is a bit easier to predict in that I think they'll probably play a bit better than they did against Cork anyway. You know? And they had a great spread of scorers last week. Yeah, I mean, they've rejigged their forward line and they, are, they do seem to be moving a bit better and playing with a little bit more confidence. Um, but this is a real step up in class today now in the quarterfinal against Galway. So uh, I think we will need to, to up, up at a level or two to have a chance. Alan, how important is it that Galway managed to get Joe Canning into the game this time and can they do it? Yeah, it's vital. Um, you know, as everyone knows, Joe is probably the best forward in the game. Um, Huge potential and massive player for Galway, and it's really, really important that they get the ball in quick. And you know, he's at the edge of the square today, where he's at, he posed the greatest threat, you know. And if we can get Joe on the ball, you know, any team with Joe on it has a great chance. In a word, who'll win? Um, Galway. Tommy? Yeah, I think, I think Tip will win today. Okay, as always, these boys staying loyal to the jersey forevermore. Yeah, no surprises there, and they were two good lads in their own time playing the game of hurling. There's no doubt about that. Uh, lovely sunny day, by the way, now here at Croke Park. An hour, a little over an hour to that game between Galway and Tip. And uh, the Galway players uh, are here, have been watching a little bit of that first half between Antrim and Cork. And just to remind you that uh, Cork lead by eight points at this stage. There's the great Joe Canning, and everybody in the country is telling John McIntyre just playing full forward and leaving there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, Joe's there. He's, he's friend there to his right, James Scahill. Both these guys have been college and Limerick together, and like Andy Smith is around as well. Well, these guys hang around a lot together, you know, they can socialise together. Like Joe, there's a lot of pressure, he's still only 22, but like undoubtedly if the ball goes in there, it isn't alone the scores he gets, Michael. When he gets on the ball, he's great to lay it off. He seems to have a lot of time on it, and other lads will get space. But like there's a lot more on the team than Joe, mm. they just can't depend on Joe the whole time. I, mean, he, I think he's been the first to admit himself, right? I mean, in a few papers during the week and stuff like that, he needs up his own performance as well. Personal performance, yeah. right? You can grant say everything has to go yeah. through Joe, but, but he, he loves the big day. He loves the big day. The bigger the occasion, yeah. the more yeah. he likes it. He's one of those guys that all the pressure sits easy on his shoulders, I think. He needs pressure. He needs yeah. pressure now to perform. It's funny, really you should pick him there. He was out as, as a hurling camp for us the other day, and there's about 150 kids, and all they wanted was Joe. They just once yeah. he appeared, the whole lot just erupted. Yeah. I know, yeah. Speaking of pressure, a bit of pressure on these lads uh, at the moment. Um, eight points down. As we were saying before the break, it's going to be a hard roll back. What, what's 
what should Antrim just do now? What are they looking to do in this second half? Well, maybe, yeah, well, certainly for the first 10 minutes we've seen, if you've seen Kilkenny or teams in this situation just after half time, Kilkenny will go on and they'll murder you. They'll go for the juggler, they'll get one or two quick goals, and that's the end and push on. I mean, you'd expect Cork to do exactly the same. But if Antrim there, you mean, you just get themselves. Well, I mean, they were in well, a situation against Dublin, Michael. They went down five or six points as well. You said the game was gone away from them. They hung in yes, there, they battled yeah, away. Yes, they're they a young team, so they have the legs, you yeah, know. So one they change in that Antrim yeah. team, by the way, uh, Tomás McCann has replaced. Uh, at, um, left half forward by Barry McFall. Yeah, a big chance I'd say in the second half that Antrim will play three at midfield because mm, they mm. got they've got to stop the the, the, the supply coming to the uh, to the Cork it's half forward, forward line, you know, yes, and, and they must yeah. stop those runs coming through of Tom Kenny and Cahan Nocton from midfield. Nocton has been brilliant today, lads. Mm, you mm. see, he cleared the ball from his own square. His work rate is absolutely he's fantastic. He's, he's playing very, 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 very deep. So maybe they'll put a third man there, try and cut off the supply to the to, to the to the Cork forwards, and then get the ball a bit faster into their own full forward line. Getting ready for the second half, all the officials are coming across the. Field here, of course, because for the first match here, the teams are on the Cusick stand side. So, getting clear, ready for the second half. We're going to head back to the commentary box to rejoin Marty Morrissey 